right? Let's look at the left guard's eyes and see what's going on on this left side. Okay, so if the tackle believed that there was a threat coming from this outside, which he probably did because why? There is an outside, the safety's outside the hash, close to the boundary. The corner's pressed on the tight end. This could be a corner blitz, right? So the one thing that we got to make sure we do as an offensive line is communicate because this is where it can get you caught up. The left side, if he thinks it's a threat for an external pressure, an edge pressure from a corner, he has to communicate to the guard to say, alert, alert, alert. Something is up on this side, however you communicate it. But for some reason, it doesn't. I don't know if there is communication or not. It probably was. But, you know, it's good crowd noise. And as you can see, this tackle starts to set really wide. Let's look at that again. And then look, boom. Okay. We give up a hit on the quarterback. All right, let's see it again. That's why you want to go Louis easy here. Because where are my left guard's eyes? They're just glued on six. He's not coming. As soon as he feels like he's not coming, he has to shoot his eyes to his gap. Now, for the tackle, look where the tackle is, right? Look at the difference between the guard and the tackle. What's the biggest difference? You tell me. Body posture. Body angles. Leverage. His arms, elbows, hands are outside his frame he has no more power in his core so he's not as powerful he's not in a powerful position okay what's another thing you notice from this left tackle talk to me talk to me talk to me talk to me okay what's another thing you notice from this left tackle if my if i want to set accordingly no matter if i'm in the slide or not i want to make sure my outside knee gets to wear on a defender Okay. We want to make sure my outside knee gets to the midline of my defender. Or the one thing that Brandon Leonard told me, uh, all pro center from the Jacksonville Jaguars, is to put your eye on a small target on the defender. You see a lot, you see a little, you see a little, you see a lot. If you're able to point your focus or have your focus point be so small, it gives you a larger margin for error rather than having a target to be so big, you have a smaller margin of error, okay? I hope that you, that, bro that broke it down for you. But that way, your eyes are glued on a spot. And so if you go past that spot, you feel it immediately because it's really your eyes that see. Your body has a hard time here. Because as you can see, out of his stance, tell me what he does. Out of his stance, he oversets. Never give up your inside. Never get beat on the inside. That's the old tale of offensive line play. And as you can see, he's already given up leverage. The defensive player is going to take the path of water, regardless if he has to be gap sound or not. He is gap responsible for where? It's outside, C gap. But he has options, right? Because he knows we're in coverage. This guy is going to be the force defender on this side, and he can. He has a two-way go. Okay, two-way go. And the tackle gives it to him. Now, we look at his base and his structure. He's already, already overset, but he doesn't help himself by his hands. And then what he does, every time your hands drop and they come outside your frame, you're probably going to be a head ducker. Head ducker. You're going to shoot like this because you're trying to overcompensate, right? That's why having a sound, being in a sound, good, strong powerful position as long as possible as efficient as possible is the best way you can be an elite offensive lineman an elite offensive lineman all right so as we see here this is trouble this is trouble his eyes are late his eyes are late he's oversetting his frame is on the outside again this is the national championship winning michigan wolverines I'm not telling them anything that they don't know. I'm just helping people at home look and analyze why certain things happen, especially offensive line-wise, right? All right, cool. 
as we see here, this is the understanding of it. And this is the play. One, one thing that we could do here, we know our calls. The calls can help us communicate. If it's built into our protection, it helps our sets to know what we're able to do and what we're able, what we're not able to do in many of these situations, right? I hope you like this segment. We kind of looked through and went over uh, the potential for a base and blitz. What's our call going to be at center? A little bit of the defensive structure, maybe of the alignment, what can possibly happen, and the technique to see what happens technique-wise breakdown for where why we can why there's hits on the quarterback, right? And it's also a protection thing as well. Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, as we see, uh, let's continue. It's a hit on the quarterback, but excellent job by this. We're gonna watch everything, right? I really love this concept. You're gonna have. It's second and six. They're just looking for a first down, right? You're going to have a switch release right here in the bunch set. You're going to have, I'm sorry, the tight end go in motion, and you're going to have a switch release within this uh, wide receiver set, right? You're going to have one go out and run a little bit of a this route right here, and you're going to have a spot route by this receiver, and then what you have here is a first down. So that's why quick protection is so vital. And also, if it's quick protection, what can this tackle do? He can jump set this guy, right? It's early in the game. You want to set a precedent. This is a perfect opportunity to now take an angle set, right? Not on the line of scrimmage, but angle set. Make sure we're still knee inside the crotch and get on him. Get on his via his neck. Act like it's a run block, right? It's quick protection. You can even cut this guy. But I think this structure spooked him out a little bit. This safety outside the hash, this corner pressed. A lot of times this may happen. And Michigan runs it a lot in their defense, right? That's a part of their philosophy and their structure. They'll have four weak. They'll have four to a side. Drop the one side, drop the D tackles, and then bring a corner, bring a nickel from the edge, right? I love the concepts. We're going to look and break, down a little, uh, break them down a little bit more. But this is the second play of the game. I really hope that you like stuff like this. This is something I love to do. And uh, shoot, let's keep going. Here we go. All right, Washington's offensive line versus Michigan's defense. We look at the structure. What's the call? Okay, what is the call? All right, basically, let's look at the defense and what the structure is. And who's who, so it gives us a better idea of where we can take our protection. Okay. So right now we have, let's look at the show. Let's look at the show. This is their corner. This is their strong safety. This is their free safety. This is their corner. Right? This is their nickel, which is a baller, by the way. Really right with number zero. This is their mic backer, and this is their will. Okay, and these are the D linemen, defensive end, defensive tackle, right? We have a, what look is this called? This is a double mug look where two linebackers are mugged up in the A gaps. Okay, what's your call here? What is your call? Me, I'll just keep it like we keep it, right? And we always like to turn away from the running back. In this instance, I believe that's what they do. Okay? So, what is the responsibility now of everybody? If we're going to go a rip call, we're turning away from the running back, we're sliding away from the running back, it's going to be a rip call, right? And essentially, it's now getting more of like a rip man concept, but we can get into that, or a slide man concept, but we can get into that a little later. What's our responsibility? Tackle has the C gap. Right guard has the B gap. Center has the front side A gap. Guard, our left guard, has this defender manned. Our left tackle has this defender manned. And our running back is now on a dual scan for this inside backer, mugged up, or this corner if he decides to come. If he drops and he decides to come, 
he got to get his eyes out to this corner right now. If he doesn't come, then he works his way back all the way to any potential threat that comes over here. That's for the running back's responsibility. All right, let's see where they turn the slide and see how they do on protection. Exactly what they did, right? Now, a lot of times you're going to see heavy tendencies or a lot of defenses do this, right, where it's a read technique for these double-mugged backers, which means that wherever the center turns to, Wherever the center turns to, that backer drops, okay? And what they're taught to do is go ahead and touch them so you can buy a blocker and then drop back into coverage, drop, drop back into hole, right? Into the hole or a spy. He's not much of a runner, though. And so wh whoever, wherever the center turns away from, the opposite backer is the rusher because what you want is – our guys are not the big guys if I'm on defense. Our guys, not on the big guys, but we want a running back to try to block you because the, we're – now, running backs are actually getting really good in protection nowadays. They're working on it. But they like this matchup better than any of these other matchups. Okay? Now, let's see what Michigan does, right? Look at this. Look at this. They do the read stunt, and what they do, look at the D-tackles. They drop on the D-tackles, too. So what does that do for the quarterback? Oh, my goodness. This is now a drop eight concept. They're dropping eight. So in the world of a quarterback, and they drop eight, oh, shit. All right? Where are you going to go with the ball? Okay? But as we see here, the edge rushers, the two D-linemen drop back into coverage. They drop back into little hole players. And I, I was probably a D line dream to be in, drop back in the coverage and pit, and catch a pick. You know what I mean? But let's keep watching. It seems like, right? They drop back in the coverage. The tackles do a really good job, but this is never something that looks great. You have three offensive linemen standing there looking around while their running back is fighting for his life. The running back is fighting for his life while three offensive linemen are just standing around wondering who to block. That's just really good defensive scheme by the Michigan Wolverines. I love it. They drop eight. The crazy thing is that they got two D linemen in coverage. Let's see if Michael Penix is able to rip this ball in and get a completion. And it's third and five. So let's see if he gets the first down. Oh, he gets in an out route. Ah, but no first down. Hey, he's a dog. Man, this is just elite play. And But on this play for me, I'm going to look at the edges. I'm going to look at the edges. Now, this is an excellent job by this right side, by the right tackle and the right guard. But this is also an excellent job by these tight ends in this bunch formation. Okay. We got two tight ends. Okay, this is a 21 personnel set. Wide receiver here, but it's a tight bunch again. Okay, to the field. And so we're, they're just going to run duo, but it's so great because they just have numbers, right? Every hat is accounted for. And then we do an excellent job of getting movement on the line of scrimmage. Excellent job of doing, getting movement on the line of scrimmage. So let's check this out, right? Right now, it's a duo scheme, so it, that means that it's very similar. It's a gap scheme without pullers. It's a gap scheme without pullers. So everybody essentially is, this is how I was taught it. Everybody is gapping down, right? Boom, gapping down, right? But there is no pullers in this gap scheme. So we can be really heavy on each of these double teams, you know, just based on leverage and linebacker location. If the linebacker is plussed over here, this center can't really spend a lot of time trying to double this three technique or even if it was a two eye. But it is a double team frenzy, right? That's what we want. But look at this edge right here. Look at what these tight ends do and to be able to shut off any seeping defenders that try to come and leak from the edge, right? Look at this.
It's excellent, man. It's excellent. Let's, look, let's go back to the D-line. I'm showing everybody some love, even the wide receiver. The wide receiver does an excellent job over here, too. Really good job over here, too. But let's check, it, check out this double team. And what I love about it is this is something that was ingrained into me when I was with the Vegas Vipers from Bob Wiley. Stay square. Square. What does that mean? Your shoulders are not turned to the sideline. I'm not perpendicular to the side. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not parallel with the sideline. I'm perpendicular. My shoulders are square facing forward. Look at the right side of Michigan's offensive line and see how square their shoulders are and their ability to get movement on the down technique and still get up to the play side backer. This is awesome. Boom. Square. Now, the right guard turns his shoulder a little bit. Turns his shoulders a little bit, but it's a scap scheme concept. He knows that this is where the ball is going, at least where the eyes of the running back are going in this concept. But really good job by staying square by the right tackle. Hits his hip, gets up to the second level, stays square, hands inside, elbows inside. Whew. That's some good stuff right there, dog. That's some good stuff. And he gets hawked. Okay, some good stuff, bro. Really good football. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Fourth and seven. Let's do this, all right? Fourth and seven. Fourth and seven. We know it's 60 protection. It may be 70. There may be seven in protection. What's your call? Okay, let's look at the defense. See what the structure is. We got a corner. We got a... Yeah, okay, we got the corner. We got the strong safety. We got the nickel. We got an end. We got a tackle. We got a mugged up Mike linebacker over the center. We got another nose or tackle. We got an end. And goodness gracious, who is this? Okay, we know this is the free safety here and then the strong safety. Okay, I know this. And this is probably the will backer. This is the will backer on the edge right here. Okay. What are we going to do? Right? What are we going to do as an offensive line? In this structure, who is covered? The guard, the tackle is covered. The guard is covered. The center is covered. The left guard is covered. And the tackle is covered. But based on their formation, it looks like it, this may be a max protection, which means that they're going to have the tight end stay in and help either chip or just be a blocker on the edge, right? So probably is, they're probably going to just try to slide to these bodies, slide to these bodies, especially with this kind of threat. It looks like what? Cover zero. Nobody's in the backfield. He looks like he's manned up somewhere. But it looks a little fishy, though, right? Because if it was man, it's fourth and seven. They're trying to protect the sticks. But it it's, you know, it looks interesting. But either way, what call will we make here? If I'm center, I'm making a 5-0 call. I'm making a 5-0 call. And that puts this responsible here, here, here. If we're in 60 protection. If there's another protection, it's whatever they want to take their slide. If they want to slide the full line to take care of these guys plus the nickel. And then the running back would be responsible for the edge. Or if they want to slide it here. You know, either way can. Oh, no, they have to slide it to the right. They have to slide it to the right because it's numbers. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys on the line of scrimmage. That's why it seems like cover zero. And they got to slide. They got a full slide. Boom, boom, boom. Just in case to pick up whoever's on that right side. Let's see what they do. And they slide it, right? You know, I give credit where credit is due. It's a pretty good job by the offensive line. It looks like zero. Look what Michigan does. They they try to they got seven on the line of scrimmage. They got four guys. It looks like cover zero. It looks like they're bringing a house. Look what they do. They drop into cover three. But look at this. There's a miscommunication. It's a miscommunication. You got seven guys on the line of scrimmage. You got four DBs. 
at the sticks. This looks like cover zero. They look at they, they're probably bringing everybody. They end up dropping them, but there's a bust. Tell me who you think is not doing the correct thing on the defensive end. Who's open? Boom, right here. It looks like either they were supposed to rotate strong or someone didn't get the message to rotate weak or strong because these guys are rotating weak. This guy rotated weak. He's here now. He's in the middle of the field, deep deep middle. He's in the deep third. But where is this guy going? Why are they rotating here and leaving this whole third of the field wide open? Now, can, can Penix make the throw? Look how open he is, and he can't make the throw. He can't make the throw. There's a lot of opportunities like that in the game that were missed, but you could see why. You could see why things like this were happening. Not only are they showing – not only are they showing zero. They're showing zero. Seven line of scrimmage, four DBs back, no, uh, no deep safety in the middle of the field. They're showing zero. They drop back into cover three. It's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be cover three. It may be quarters. It may be quarters, but someone has to be responsible for this uh, uh, field, uh, for, for that area of the field. And they're not. It's hard to see stuff like that. He sees he's open, but there's still pressure. They dropped everybody, and there's still pressure on one of the best tackles in college football. It's just a good defense. It's just a really good defensive structure, a good defensive scheme. I really enjoy watching Michigan and what they do. They have a couple other exotic pressures in here that are pretty good. Okay, It's still pressure. It's still pressure. Shout out to the running backs, though, man. There's a lot of running backs that, sla that saved a lot of offensive lines' lives. People, offensive line don't like to admit it, but running backs, you know, sometimes they, they, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they do, and they will save you for eternity. But otherwise, man, this video has gone on long enough. I, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is something I kind of enjoy watching as I learn the game a little bit more and get to dissect it and dive deeper into it. Um, it's fun to watch. It's fun to do. So let me know if you enjoy this kind of content. Uh, I plan to make a couple more videos, and shoot, man, hey, just be in the, just continue to be the best that you can be in any endeavor in your life, in any endeavor in your life. Find really good people to be around. Find a wonderful mentor, and just keep working. Keep working. Enjoy the process more than the reward. That's something that I've been confused with. For a while, but that's something that I would like to share with whoever's watching. Okay. Love, peace, healing, prosperity to everybody. Again, this is Tony with Adams Athletics, and this is Film and Chill, baby. Hope you enjoyed.